One. I loved the neighborhood where I grew up. It was a place where people cared about how their yards looked without guidelines set by HOA. Everyone knew their neighbors, everyone was neighborhood watch. Kids played in the street, and if there was a party, everyone came. Everyone watched out for everyone else. We called it the circle because that was the literal layout of the neighborhood. A giant circle. It was also a bubble. Even before the gates went up, the bad stayed out of the circle. It was almost like a parallel universe. Right at the edge of the circle were the liquor store and bail bonds, the drugs, pimps, and gangs. It is important to this story for you all to know that I am mixed race. My dad is black, and my mom is white. They rented the lower half of a duplex owned by a pair of very nice people. Their daughter was my best friend growing up. Next door to the duplex was my grandparents' home where they lived with my three aunts and three uncles. It worked out perfectly because my Aunt S ran a daycare. When my mom walked out in us, my dad relied on my grandmother and Aunt S to watch me while he worked. It is important also to know that they are all black. I am on the opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to skin color. I am olive skinned on the pale side. Anyone who didn't know us would have never guessed that I was a biological member of the family. My Aunt S frequented the liquor store just outside of the circle. It was where we walked when she needed cigarettes, and we kids bought dollar treats. It was small, it carried the basics that one might forget picking up from the grocery store. And we went there so often that everyone who worked there knew us. One day, I was the only kid my Aunt S was watching, and we walked together to the liquor store for her smokes. I can't stress enough that I do not look like her in any way. I was comfortable enough in the area that when we reached the path close to the liquor store, I ran off, still within sight of my aunt at all times. I entered the store before her, but only by about 30 seconds. I knew she wasn't going to get me treats, so while we went to the counter for her smokes, I decided to stroll through the aisles. Like I said, it's a small store with rows of goods. I like to snake up and down the aisles, going up one, down the next, up the next, etc. The very first aisle closest to the entrance was the dog food, toilet paper, travel-sized toothpaste aisle. There was this man standing there. I want to say he was looking at dog food, but I can't be sure. He was definitely shopping, though. I was either seven or eight at the time. It was the early 90s, so I was aware of stranger danger and not talking to people I didn't know. So I didn't acknowledge him, aside from a quick glance before, deciding to just breeze through the aisle instead of touching every little thing like I always do. In my head, when I picture him, I see a white man, a blurred but older face, not nursing home old, but maybe in his 50s, and I see his white hair. What stood out to me most, for whatever reason, was what he was wearing. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Khaki slacks and a brown leather jacket. Not worn leather, but the glossy kind. He glanced at me as well, but then went back to his shopping. Each aisle in the liquor store was about 15 feet. I'm horrible with math, so I'm guessing. My kitchen is 12 by 12, and the aisles were longer than that. And I slipped past the man and continued down the aisle towards the back of the store where I planned to pivot and head back down the next aisle over. I don't remember actually seeing the moment he turned to follow me, but I remember feeling something, a shift in the atmosphere or maybe a twist in my gut. But I just knew he was following behind me, not closely, but not coincidental if you get what I mean. I don't know exactly what took over me, my dad says that back then, I didn't have enough common sense to find my way out of a paper bag. And I can't imagine having instincts honed enough to detect that kind of danger, and yet I felt something. Without really understanding why, I sped up as much as I could, without making it seem obvious. 
I made it to the end of the aisle. I pivoted and rounded the corner. It was at that moment when I realized I was right. He was behind me, and the moment I turned, he obviously sped up to close the gap. I didn't care at that point. I increased my speed, and in my peripheral I saw him lunge to close the gap more. That's when I took off and bolted to my aunt's side. She hadn't been paying attention to me during what was literally just over a minute from the time we walked in, but when I rushed up beside her at the counter, she took a quick look at me and then looked up and fixed that man with a stare that could freeze water. He turned and walked quickly out through the front entrance without buying a thing. In retrospect, I know exactly what that man was thinking when he saw a little white girl enter a liquor store by herself. He was thinking that it would be easy to say he's my grandfather, that I was kicking and hollering because he wouldn't buy me candy. He was thinking that it would be easy to walk me off to his car without question, because I look like him and not the only other woman in the store. He judged a book by the cover and ended up dead wrong. I still think about this from time to time. What would have happened if I hadn't been so aware of him? What if he had succeeded? Where would I be? And probably the most heart-wrenching of all, were there others after me who hadn't been so lucky? 2. So this story involves myself and a male co-worker, and has been going on now for approximately a year and a half. I have been working at my current job for about three years, and so I have known this co-worker, we'll call him Bob, for the same length of time. Bob and I had always got on fairly well at work. We often joked with each other and our relationship was sort of flirty at times. I always thought he was a nice guy, although he sometimes seemed a little odd, but I just put it down to shyness. I had heard some stories about him here and there, that he had some personal problems going on, going through a messy divorce, drinking, being a bit of a loner, etc. But I suppose I like to judge people based on my personal experience, and I don't buy too much into workplace gossip. I have since learned that gossip often contains an element of truth. One evening in March 2015, I was reading through some messages I'd received on a dating app I was using at the time, when I came across a message from a guy with no profile picture. Normally I would skip over these messages because I think the lack of a picture shows that the guy hasn't really put much thought or effort into his profile. But for some reason I clicked. To my surprise, it was a friendly message from Bob, with a mobile number attached. Thinking this was just a coincidental encounter, I gave him my number and we began texting. After exchanging messages for a couple of hours, Bob confided in me that he was in need of someone to talk to, and asked if we could meet up somewhere to talk. This was close to midnight, and although I stay up late, I was already dressed for bed. At first I turned him down, but after some pleading on his part, I agreed to meet him at the end of my driveway, so as not to wake my housemate. I went out to meet Bob in my pajamas, and soon realized how naive I had been to think he just wanted to talk. In my defense, this was a guy who I'd known for a while, and who I felt sorry for. So I didn't think to dress up for the occasion, he came fully dressed and wearing cologne. Bob and I sat at the end of my driveway for about an hour just making small talk, and it was obvious that the sob story of needing a friend had been a ruse to get me to meet him. He broached the subject of dating, which I politely declined, but said I'd think about it. I still hadn't seen any red flags at this point. At this point, the situation had become a little awkward and I made an excuse that I was tired and that I was going to head inside. We hugged and then as we pulled away, he appeared to be looking at something over my shoulder. I turned to see what he was looking at and as I turned back, 
Bob kissed me. For several painful moments, I stood there stiff as a post, totally surprised by this. It didn't even occur to me to push him away. I quickly said goodbye and headed back inside feeling a little unnerved by the whole thing. Again, this all felt like a plan to get me to meet up away from work. Before I went to bed, I received several follow-up texts telling me how much he enjoyed kissing me and that he would kiss me again when he saw me at work the next day. I asked him not to do that as I had not agreed to dating him. The following day at work, Bob didn't kiss me, thankfully, but he was much more flirty than usual, touching me affectionately on the arm or waist as he passed me. At some point during my shift, I bumped into my cousin and her boyfriend, who was another co-worker of mine and Bob's, and told them what had happened. The response from my cousin's boyfriend was my first red flag. No, just no. Stay away from him. Don't even go there. Though I asked for more information, he would not elaborate. Part of me was a little annoyed because I didn't like being told what to do, but common sense kicked in and I realized that my cousin and her boyfriend were looking out for me. I decided that I would tell Bob I was not interested in him. About two or three days after our rendezvous on the driveway. In this time, Bob had been texting, calling me quite a lot asking me to hang out at strange hours, bitching about his ex-wife, telling me he missed me. For the most part, I had begun ignoring him. I rang him and told him that I had decided we would remain friends. He was a little disappointed, but seemed to take it well overall. I went to work, Bob had the day off, and thought nothing more of it. While I was at work, he sent me a text message that said, I hate the friend zone. I would like to see if anything evolves. This both creeped me out and made me angry, because I had been very clear that I was not interested, and he seemed to be refusing to accept my decision not to date him. Not to mention he had been inundating me with texts and phone calls for the past few days, and starting to show his true colours. I sent back a text firmly reiterating my decision, and he proceeded to send me multiple messages that were designed to guilt and manipulate me into feeling sorry for him so I would change my mind. I became annoyed and told him that I didn't think having a relationship outside of work was a good idea and that we should keep things professional between us from now on. Within an hour of sending my final text, Bob showed up at work on his day off when he lives 20 to 30 minutes away I saw him arrive and my heart started pounding because I knew that he had driven there with the express purpose of seeing me. After chatting briefly with a few other co-workers, he walked up to me. His speech was slurred and he stunk of alcohol. He tried to talk to me, but I told him that I was not willing to discuss the situation with him while I was working. I quickly immersed myself in work so that he would leave, which he did after a few minutes. Towards the end of my shift, he rang the work phone and tried to talk to me again. I begged him to leave me alone and hung up. Needless to say, I had multiple missed calls and texts on my personal phone as well. After this incident, I became very cold towards him and rarely answered any of his attempts at contact. I also confided in the security guards at work, I work nights, and asked them to accompany me when Bob was around so that I wouldn't have to deal with him. I should explain that this was not because I thought Bob would hurt me, but more so he couldn't talk to me while I was on breaks or arriving, leaving work. Since this incident, Bob has made attempts to contact me both at and outside of work, sometimes with months in between. I have not reported him to my boss for several reasons which I won't get into, but things have calmed down a great deal now. Here are some of the most bizarre things he has done that I can remember over the past 18 months. He drunkenly rang me both at work and on my personal phone, often leaving voicemails that are so slurred I can't understand what he's saying. 
contacted me through a variety of different social media platforms, Facebook, dating apps, etc., despite me telling him not to contact me. Continually asked me out, despite me repeatedly telling him no, and then talking about being depressed and wanting to hurt himself. Confided in me about very personal issues, many of which are likely completely untrue or exaggerated, even though we hardly know each other. On one occasion, he invented a girlfriend whose name was almost identical to mine. He told everyone at work about her, and then tried to ask me out again. When I mentioned his girlfriend, he confessed to me that he made her up to make me jealous. Invited me over to his place in the middle of the night, and asked me to pick him up from different places, despite me telling him I wanted nothing to do with him outside of work. Asked me to pretend to be his girlfriend when I refused to actually date him. Repeatedly brought up the time he kissed me, and told me he thinks about it all the time, and wishes I'd let him kiss me again. Talked to other co-workers about me, asking them for advice on what to say to get me to agree to dating him. He recently told me he will be going to jail for assault, soon, although he wouldn't say what happened, and I'm unsure if this is true. He often exaggerates, makes up stories. Sorry that this was long, there's probably other things I'm forgetting about. I've also recently found out that this guy has been obsessed with me, pretty much since I started working there. All of this was very unsettling to me while it was happening. Especially since I hardly knew him. Hopefully it's creepy enough for you. 3. For some background, my mother is a single mother because my dad left before I was born. She works very hard, and in the whole 17 years leading up to this point, it was always just me and her. She never had a boyfriend or anything like that, but just before my 17th birthday, this is what happened. It wasn't long before Christmas, and my mother had told me that she was speaking to one of her old friends from school on Facebook, and was going to ask him to come round for some food and drink as a catch-up. At this point, I had no male role model in my life whatsoever, so I can't say I wasn't a little excited that my mother had finally met someone after so long. On the day he came round, I was out most of the night because my mother had bought me two tickets to see 50 Cent for me and a friend as an early Christmas present. So we went, and my friend stayed over after. This is when I first made contact with the man I'll call Dan. So he stands up, shakes my hand, and tells me he's heard a lot about me. And all seems good. He even bought us food and convinced my mum to give me another early Christmas present. So I liked him already. If only I knew then what I know now. So now you're all caught up. That happened around November. So fast forward to January, which is when my birthday is. And I was turning 17. Now this had already started to feel a bit weird to me. Because Dan had already moved into my house. But I just thought he might have been struggling. Even though he always went on about that he worked offshore on the oil rigs. He had three houses that are all up for rent. So you would expect him to have a fair bit of cash, but never seemed to have any. So anyway, my 17th birthday comes and I ask my mum if I can have a party. Just messing with her because it was obvious she'd say no. And she did. But then Dan overhears and convinces her to let me. And they will both stay so it doesn't get out of hand. So I invite my friends over and we're having a good time. And I'm really starting to like Dan. Even though I had only knew him for a short amount of time, he seemed to understand what it's like to be my age. So the party's going good. Everyone's enjoying it. Then Dan sits in the front room with us. This is where it started to get a little off. I am the funny one in my friendship group, so I made my friends laugh quite a lot, but Dan didn't really seem to like it. I don't really know what he was thinking, but he started talking to all of my friends, as if he were competing with me, and belittling me every chance he got. I thought it was a little weird, but I'd never had a father figure before, so I thought he was just joking. But as the night went on, it got weirder. 
He came up to me later on and pulled out a tiny bag with cocaine inside and offered me some. Being 17. When your mom's boyfriend offers you coke in front of your friends, that has to be the coolest thing in the world. So I had some, he then said to me. Don't tell your mum or I'll get into shit. And I agreed I wouldn't. Believe me, I'd be in a lot more shit than he would if I did tell her. So anyway, Dan got more and more drunk, and then started to like my friends more than I did, and made a comment to one of my friend's girlfriends who was 16, and he was late 30s, asking if she wanted to go upstairs, and she said no, and came up to me asking what the fuck his problem was, and I shook it off again, saying he'll just be messing around. So the party's over, and it's a few days later and Dan is acting really weird. Not to my face, but behind my back. For example, my mum would ask me to wash the dishes or to clean my room. And Dan would say, Don't worry about it. Just leave them. You go out and I'll do it. So I said thanks and went out and when I'd come home, the dishes wouldn't be done and my room would be a mess so I'd get into shit for it. It was just stupid things like this that began to make me start thinking. This is where the worst part comes in. My mum and Dan are going out drinking for the night. My mum never normally drinks, but I assume she's just going because he wanted to. So I invited my girlfriend over to stay the night while they were gone, so we ordered food, watched movies, then fell asleep. We were then awoken by my mum screaming, No, Dan, please, don't! and Dan screaming at her, saying, I'll kill you and your fucking son. So I told my girlfriend to wait in bed, and give her a small metal pole from my weight set to defend herself with, in case anything happened. Then I proceeded downstairs. When I got downstairs, it was crazy. There was a hole straight through my TV. The glass cabinet had been smashed, and Dan had my mother by her arm, screaming in her face that she's no good and loads of other horrible things, so I shout, Get the fuck off her! They both freeze, then calm down, and straight away he says, I didn't hit her. Do you really think I'd do that? In the calmest voice ever. So I did what any immature teenager would do, and punched that cunt straight in the nose. But obviously he has muscles bigger than my waist. I am not the biggest of mammals to populate this planet. So he just tackles me to the floor and punches me. Then all of a sudden, someone bangs on the door, but they didn't stop to wait to see if anyone answered. It was just repeated until Dan answered the door. My next door neighbor was there with a pole in his hand and said, Have you been fucking hitting her? And Dan is extremely calm and says, What are you talking about? I then stand in the doorway behind him, bleeding from my nose and nod. My next door neighbor then drags him outside and they both start fighting on my front garden. And Dan had been hit by the pole so he was bleeding from his head and had blood down his face. The police then arrived. My neighbor obviously called them before he started swinging poles around, which was a smart move. Dan was then arrested and my neighbor also got taken to court. And my mom stuck up for Dan. But she was obviously just scared, so I made a statement to the police, because God only knows what he would have done if my neighbor didn't come. So now Dan's in jail. There's no story about it as proof, but I'm just hoping that you'll believe it. But the weirdest part about it all is that me and my mum talked about it a few months later. And she said, He never had any money. He didn't have three houses. He lived with his mum and had lied about it all. He was just living off me the full time, and he had spent a lot of money. So for a while we thought we would have to sell the house. My mum is a fighter though, so she worked her butt off to pay off all the debts owed and keep the house, but she also said, he told me you took cocaine and always refused to do things he asked, which I denied at the time, but she knows the truth now I'm older. But even though I took it, I can't help think that he was trying to get in between me and my mum to bring us down when in fact, it only made us closer. She's fine now, and we still live in the same house. I asked her about why he hit her, 
and she said, He said I slept with one of his friends at your party. Which was quite funny, because my mum wasn't even there, but that just shows how crazy he was. There were a few more incidents from Dan, so if you want to know more, just comment and I'll get to it when I have spare time. My mum is now with a different man who is one of the nicest people I've ever met. And Dan is married to another woman he was cheating on my mum with the entire time. God help that woman. Dan, let's never, ever, ever meet again. Hey everyone, Hell Freezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Three True Scary Stories, episode 132. Uh, before I go on, I'd just like to say thank you very much to everyone who allowed me to use their stories. I'm very grateful for that. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's getting very windy outside here. And the temperature's dipping, that's obviously a sign that the, the bad weather is well and truly on its way. Summer's officially over. I suppose. And I just got a new fan. Still on the plus side, it does mean I can make cups of tea again. Nice hot cups of tea. I've been on the iced tea for the past few months. So I'll be back to steaming hot cups of Earl Grey. Because I may be Scottish, but I am also very British. And we do like our tea. It's not actually something I used to drink much of. Not until maybe the past few years. Never really much of a fan of tea or coffee for that matter. But I tried a few different ones and I found I liked the, the Twinings Oral Grey and uh, some of the green teas I quite enjoy as well. I might like others but I've really just only tried those ones and when I like something I tend to stick with it. And just in case anyone's wondering, no this is not sponsored in any way. I'm not big enough for sponsors. Okay, I think I'm going to head off for now. Getting a bit tired and I've got a little bit more recording to do before bed. Just trying to get as much done as possible just to make tomorrow's workload a lot easier because I tend to do three days worth of material on the Friday. Not really a, perhaps not the best way to do it but it does mean I can free my weekend up which will allow me to do other things like finally do that decorating that I've been putting off. I actually got my brother-in-law to run me down to the local DIY store tonight. So I've got paint and brushes and that. He even gave the ceiling a first coat, but it's going to need another one because it's looking a bit patchy. Okay, but I don't need to bore you with that, so I'm going to head off now. So, until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves. <laughs>